I am Miss Mary Cecile G. Pajardo. This is my midterm examination output presentation in at 201. This will be presented to you by yours truly and will be submitted to our very own course professor, Sir Kent Lau, for this academic year 2021 to 2022. Discuss the types and activities at different levels and roles or professional functions of a manager including accountability and how they contribute to organizational performance in an organization. Management and leadership are two different words with different function in a particular organization. Managers are tasked to plan, organize, lead, and control. This gives them the sense of responsibility to provide the most effective ways on addressing the things that are need to be addressed for the welfare of each of his or her subordinate and in an organization where he or she is involved. She must ensure as well the success not only in the part of organization but also the success of the employees. This role must come with dedication and patience to build a strong foundation and an open communication in an organization. Discuss the nature and elements of an organization including a discussion of its purpose and its changing nature. An organization is a group of people that work in the same manner to collectively come up with a specific and desired goal. This could be bureaucratic or in a hierarchy system. This is significant for the fact that it establishes a good atmosphere and great unity to achieve a better workplace and a formal system distribution of roles that employees can perform. In today's type of organization, we are much more exposed in digital and virtual way on communicating and enhancing one's performance. We are evolving as we should in order to adapt this new normal and changing world. Define the essential managerial skills that contribute to the management processes. Managerial skills are important in the process of building a strong foundation within the organization. These skills are needed and should be implemented in running the organization properly. These are technical, conceptual, interpersonal and communication, and of course, lastly, the decision-making skills. These skills can be learned and enhanced by giving enough attention and determination. Discuss the salient features of the classical organization and management theories. Taylor Scientific Management Barnard's The Function of Executive, Paylor's Administrative Theory, and Gulick and Urwick's Papers on the Science of Administration. Classical management theories are developed in order to study, predict, and control behavior. In these theories, some of the well-known founding fathers gave contributions on expanding and greater explain the theories on classical management theories. Scientific management, function of the executive, administrative theory, and the papers on the science of administration to be given.
Scientific theory focuses on maximum productivity and uses time motion method. Taylor believed that a job should be investigated in action to find the best way to do the job. This is based upon the principles also known as Taylorism by the founding father Frederick Taylor. In the function of executive, there are also principles developed by Chester Barnyard. These are individual and bounded rationality, cooperation system, formal organization, and lastly the informal organization. He also introduced principal dynamic concepts. Henley Paylor's administrative theory was developed based from his own personal experience and gave great focus on management as he witnessed the Industrial Revolution. He cited six activities of an industry in order to run an organization. These are technical, commercial, financial, security, accounting, and lastly, the managerial. He even introduced 14 principles of management to give a microscopic level of study on what would management look like in day-to-day -day activities. And for the last one, the science of administration, which has been studied by two individuals in the name of Luther Golick and Lyndall Burry. They introduce administrative activities, which is known as Posticorp. This can be used as a systematic framework to efficiently execute right processes to get desired outcomes in business or by an individual. Discuss the salient features of the behavioral approach to organization and management theories. The Horton studies, Maslow's theory of human needs, Weber's theory of bureaucracy, and McGregor's theory X and Y. Behavioral approach aim to give and create favorable conditions that keep workers or employees satisfied and motivated, and to promote favorable performance on their work. This is how it evolves. To know every inch of reason why some employees are motivated and how to keep them motivated, human needs are difficult to completely satisfy. Abraham Maslow then introduced the needs of humans or the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This theory helps the manager to visualize employees' motivation and needs. While for the McGregor's theory X and Y, this theory show different sides of employees and managers. As for Theory X, it focuses on the assumption the employees are unmotivated or in particular, they do not like the task assigned to them. While for Theory Y, this assumption implies on the employee's motivation or how he she likes his work by the outcome of the task given. Discuss the salient features of the contemporary approach to organization and management theories. Berta Landry Systems Management Theory, Lawrence and Lorch Organization and Management Contingency Theory, Woodward's Management and Technology, and Mitch Bird's The Structuring of Organization, Organizational Configuration.
Contemporary or modern theory focuses on three approaches. These are quantitative, system, and contingency approaches. These are commonly used at all the range of the management to take the decision effectively. Organization is a dynamic system as it is responsive to each environment, hence is vulnerable to changes. There is actually classification of systems. These are open systems and closed systems. The difference of these two are as follows. An open system actively interacts with its environment. It tries to establish exchange relationship and is open for feedback. While as for closed system, it is self-contained and isolated from the environment. It does not receive inputs from other systems and does not trade with the outside world. In an organization, it is viewed as from inputs to transformational process and finally the outputs. In inputs, this includes material, money, energy, and information come in from the external environment. a leader use power to achieve influence. Discuss using the managerial power equation and why are both powers essential to management. Leadership has different types, but a leader must always think of the benefit for the greater majority. A leader can be authoritarian or democratic. It depends on the working environment where he or she affiliated with. But the sense of leadership must always come to the priorities of a leader. A leader is basically the person who always takes the lead in an organization or in a work environment. A leader uses his power through guiding, assisting, motivating, as well as his or her subordinates in a non-biased decision-making. Being fair, just, and consistent on decision-making can build a strong trust towards subordinates. This is how a leader uses power to achieve influence. This is how my presentation ends. Thank you very much.